So I've looked all around YouTube and all I could find was the 1NZ FE fixes for the belt. So this, what I've got is a 2NZ FE and it should be quick and easy, but this is probably the only thing about the Toyota Yaris I dislike. You have to remove the engine mount. So this is gonna be a quick fix video, but not a quick fix problem. That should be a quick fix problem. <laughs> And my car was making this noise. Now I didn't get it on video, but it was chirping like a bird or a cricket in Spain or somewhere crazy like that. Hey guys, Chris Fix here. You hear this squeaking noise? Today I'm gonna to show you how to tell where the squeaking noise is coming from, whether it's a belt or a pulley. And if it's the belt, I'm gonna explain why it could be the belt. There's different reasons why the belt might squeak. And if it's the pulley, I'm gonna show you how to diagnose which pulley is causing the noise and why it might be causing the noise. Is it a bad bearing? Is it pulley misalignment? And I have a very useful and easy method to show you how to do all this. So if you haven't seen the video from Chris Fix, I recommend going and checking him out now. His video did say that you should spray water on the belt and it stopped squeaking. It's probably time for a new belt, caused by probably misalignment and the belt teeth has been worn down too much. So I thought I'll replace the idler pulley first because it's quicker and easier job to do and only for a couple more quid more. Plus that other one probably needed it anyway. So I replaced it and that wasn't the fix for the problem. It still squeaked. So we've got to take off the engine mount and change the belt. So the tools for doing this job is going to be a jack, block of wood or something just to rest the engine on. I didn't jack my car up or put it on ramps, probably no need. You can get a way of doing it without. You might want to put it up on ramp because there's a blind engine mount bolt and putting on the belt can be a bit cumbersome if you're not used to it. We're going to need an M10 socket to remove the underbody plastic panel on the drive side. There might be a screw for you to undo at the top. There's normally like five screws and one machine screw one of my screws at the top snapped off ages ago so i've got probably less to remove than what you do obviously we're going to need a new belt i'm using the deco one an old rag and some brake cleaner just to clean up the pulleys just to make sure there's no debris and grease and stuff on it gonna need a 14 mil and a 12 mil socket ideally gonna want to have the deep reach sockets a 12 mil and a 40 mil spanner some gloves to save your pretty little nails getting dirty a couple of socket extensions Maybe a crowbar or some sort of leverage bar. So first of all, we're going to take away the cowling on the driver's side and it should pretty much be an M10 all the way through. There's a couple of like rough screws and there's a couple of machine screws. So you have two M14s that hold the engine mount to the engine block. And then you've got three M14s that go onto the wing, one above, one below and one to the side. And also underneath, you've got an M14 bolt that holds the engine mount to the engine cell, which you might find it hard to see, but it is this little bit highlighted here. With the engine mount removed, we're gonna release the alternator spring tension guide system, which I've never worked out how to use properly. And uh, it's basically an M12 all the way through. It's just slackening it all. And then just a case of pulling it forward to low some force until you create some slack in the belt. I've often found it easier to take the second guy pulley off the engine mount. And then this will slacken off the belt easily. And then just put a screwdriver up there just to secure the belt in place. Next, we're gonna spray the pulleys with just a bit of brake cleaner, just to clear up any oil or debris that might have accumulated on them. Feeding the belt on is gonna be quite simple, but you really must work from one direction to the other direction. And I tend to find getting it around the alternator and up around the water pump pulley, and then doing that little funny thing around the first pulley and then around the crank pulley, and then back up then around the air conditioning pulley, back up to the second idler pulley. And then with the belt on, you can then re-thread the second idler pulley back into the hole and tighten it up from there. I've never really worked out how to use this pulley tensioning system. I would just push it back as far as it goes till it's taut and then just tighten everything down. Side tensioner that will tension the travel of the actual main bolt. And then the second one, I think just senses it down. And then the third one, which is actually on the alternator to the engine, actually just reinforces that clamp. If anybody has a clue on how to actually do this properly, then please leave a suggestion, leave something to give us some direction because I really haven't a clue on this. I feel free, over and out.